So today we want to have a look at rational indices. So that is indices that are fractions. Um, so you see here 2 to the power of a half, 7 to the power of a half, 8 to the power of a third, etc, etc. Okay, so I want to just start by thinking about some examples and what we know and using what we know to see if we can observe some patterns that enable us to work out what's happening with the rational indices. So we want to simplify 2 to the power of a half and then to the power of 1. Uh, sorry, 2 to the power of a half and then to the power of 2. So we know that when we have power after power like this, we multiply them together. Our index laws tell us that. So we know that this is 2 to the power of half times 2, which is 2 to the power of 1, and so 2. Uh, we know that 7 to the power of a half and then squared is 7 to the power of a half times 2. So that is 7 to the power of 1, so 7. And the same logic with 13. 13 to the power of a half squared is 13 to the power of a half times 2, which is 13 to the power of 1, which is 13. Okay, so then let's think about the second column. So if I know that something squared is equal to 2, I know that the only way I can square something and get 2 is if it is the square root of 2. Something squared gives me 7, that means it must be ne uh, sorry root 7 squared, which gives me 7. Similarly, something squared gives me 13, root 13, all squared, uh, is 13. Okay, so then let's have a look at what we're seeing. So we know that 2 to the power of a half, when we square it, gives us 2. We also know that square root of 2, when we square it, gives us 2. So that then must tell us that 2 to the power of a half and the square root of 2 are actually the same thing. Similarly, 7 to the power of a half, when we square it, gives us 7. Square root of 7, when we square that, also gives us 7. And so therefore, 7 to the power of a half must be the same as the square root of 7. And the same logic follows with 13 to the power of a half and square root of 13. And so if we try to generalise then, okay, we know that 2 to the power of a half is the square root of 2. 7 to the power of a half is the square root of 7. 13 to the power of a half is the square root of 13. And so therefore, x to the power of a half must be the square root of x. Okay, let's think about um, powers of a third. <coughs> So 2 to the power of a third, if we were to cube that, um, again, same logic, index laws tell us we multiply these indices together. So we get 2 to the power of a third times, sorry, a third times 3, which is 2 to the power of 1, which is 2. 8 to the power of a third times 3 is 8 to the power of 1, which is 8. 27 to the power of 1 third times 3 is the same as 27 to the power of 1, which is 27. Okay, so again, let's have a look at the second column and think a bit separately about this one, and then we'll draw connections between the two. All right, so something cubed equals 2. Okay, um, the only way I could cube something to equal 2 would be the cube root of 2. When I cube that, I get 2. Alright, something cubed equals 8. Well, something cubed equals 8, that's 2. I.e., the cube root of 8. Something cubed gives me 27, well, that's 3. And that's because 3 is the cube root of 27. Okay, so again, trying to draw some conclusions with what we've seen. So I know that 2 to the power of 1 third when I cube it, gives me 2. I also know that the cube root of 2, when I cube it, gives me 2. So therefore, 2 to the power of 1 third is equal to the cube root of 2. 8 to the power of a third, when we cube it, we get 8. Similarly, cube root of 8, i.e. 2, when we cube it, we get 8. So therefore, 8 to the power of a third must be equal to the cube root of 8 which is 2 in this instance. 27 to the power of a third. When we cube that, we get 27. 
we know that when we cube 3, which is the cube root of 27, we also get 27. So therefore, 27 to the power of 1 third must be the same as the cube root of 27, which happens to be 3 in this instance. So can we draw a conclusion? x to the power of a third is the cube root of x. Careful when you write cube roots that you don't end up making them look like, um, you know, 3 root x versus cube root of x. And this is actually sort of why fractional powers sometimes are a bit preferable to using roots. Square root is fine, but cube root, fourth root, it can be sort of easy for that to quickly look like 3 root x instead of cube root of x. Um, there's less ambiguity with x to the power of a third. Okay, so let's see if we can generalise that even further. So obviously if we've got x to the power of 1 over n, that is the nth root of x. So x to the power of a quarter would be the fourth root of x. x to the power of a fifth would be the fifth root of x, etc. Alright, let's have a look at some non-unit fractions now. Let's think about what we've got happening here. So by that I mean fractions where the numerator is not 1. So we've looked at 1 half, 1 third, 1 quarter, etc. 1 over n. So now let's think about fractions where we have a um, numerator that is not 1. Okay, so here we've got 25 to the power of 5 over 2. So what we actually need to think about is we actually really have two different powers in 1 here. So if I think about, alright, well I know that 25 is 5 times 1 half. So I know that I multiply powers together when I have one power after another. So that means that I could either write this as 25 to the power of 5 and then that to the power of a half, or I could write this as 25 to the power of a half and then that to the power of 5. Okay, so um, that would mean in the first instance, the top example, 25 to the power of 5 and then to the power of a half, that would be the square root of 25 to the power of 5. In the second example, if we wrote it this way, thought about it this way, that would be the square root of 25 and then that to the power of 5. Now, it's always going to be easier to apply the fractional power first, that is to make the number smaller before you then make it bigger. If we look at the top example, I'm going to need to know what 25 to the power of 5 is. That's going to be a big number, okay? I don't know what 25 to the power of 5 is off the top of my head. Um, and then I won't know how to, what the square root of that big number is either. So always easier to make it smaller. So the second option is usually the preferred option, so the 25 to the power of a half and then to the power of 5, because I can square root 25, it's 5, and then I need to know what 5 to the power of 5 is, uh, which I don't know off the top of my head, I'm just going to type that into my calculator, 3125. Okay, let's think about 49 to the power of 3 on 2. So again, this is 49, 3 on 2 is half times 3. It's easier to apply the fractional power first, so I'm going to write this as 49 to the power of 1 half, and then we're cubing that. So you could write it as 49 cubed and then to the power of a half, but that's going to be harder to calculate. Okay, so 49 to the power of a half is square root of 49. We're cubing that, so we're going to have 7 cubed, which is 343. All right, 8 to the power of 4 thirds. So we've got 8. 4 thirds is 1 third times 4, which means we've got 8 to the power of 1 third and then to the power of 4. 8 to the power of 1 third is the cube root of 8 to the power of 4. Cube root of 8 is 2 to the power of 4, which is 16. 27 to the power of 2 thirds. So that is 27 to the power of 1 third times 2, so 27 to the power of 1 third all squared, 27 to the power of a third is cube root of 27 which is 3 squared, and so we have 9. Alright, part E, 32 to the power of negative 2 fifths. So now we're combining our negative and our fractional indices. So the negative power Remember, it means that this is on the bottom of a fraction. It's about taking the reciprocal of the fraction. 
So 1 over 32 to the power of 2 fifths. Okay, so now let's think about 32 to the power of 2 fifths. So it's 1 over 32, oh sorry, not 35, 32. Now it's going to be 1 fifth times 2, so it's going to be 1 fifth all squared. Okay, so 32 to the power of 1 fifth is the fifth root of 32, which is 2. So we've got 2 squared, which is a quarter. I'd really suggest that your index laws working with indices is going to be much, much more efficient if you know some of those smaller powers. So I would say you should recognize 2 to the power of 1, 2 to the power of 2, obviously all the way up to, you know, at least 2 to the power of 6, really, you should be able to sort of say, oh, that's 2 to the power of 6, that's 2 to the power of 4, that's 2 to the power of 5. Um, similarly with 3, um, I'd say maybe, you know, 3 squared, 3 cubed, 3 to the power of 4 off the top of your head. Um, you know, 5, 6, 7, at least recognize 3, you know, those numbers squared and cubed. Um, just it'll make it more efficient. Maybe draw yourself up a little list that you can refer to. Okay, so, um, but if you can't refer to it, I mean, 32, I definitely know that's a power of 2. Just start listing them out. Powers of 2. 2 is you know, power of, 2 to the power of 1 is 2, I'm going to get 4, I'm going to get 8, I'm just doubling every time, that's how powers work, 16, 32, 64, we could keep going if you want, 128, 256, etc, etc. So this is 2 to the power of 1, this is 2 squared, this is 2 cubed, this is 2 to the power of 4, this is 2 to the power of 5, 2 to the 6, 2 to the 7, 2 to the 8, etc. And you could keep going. So you should be able to generate them relatively quickly as well. All right, let's generalize our observations about x um, to the power of m over n. So we can write that as x to the power of 1 on n to the power of m, which means the nth root of x all to the power of m. Or we could write it as x to the m and then to the 1 on n. So that would mean x to the m and then the nth root of that. It's usually going to be easier to go with the top version where you can make the number smaller via the root before you then make it bigger. Okay, let's have a look at a couple more examples. So evaluate each of the following. 16 to the power of a half. So power of a half is a square root. So 16 to the power of a half is the square root of 16, which is four. 27 to the power of a third is the cube root of 27, which is three. 64 to the power of a quarter is the fourth root of 64. Now, if we go back to our, uh, actually, that's not correct. Can I fix that? Let's make that question um, the cube root of 64, okay? Um, so 64 to the power of a third, cube root of 64. Again, I'm thinking, oh, okay, I don't, it's definitely not five or three. It's got to be an even number. I know two is, um, two to the power of six is 64. Um, so thinking about your numbers, 4 to the power of 1, 4 to the power of 2, 4 to the power of 3, yes, okay, so it's 4. Um, so this is going to be 4. 4 to the power of 3 on 2, so this is 4 to the power of a half, so square root of 4, which will be 2, and then we're going to cube that. So 2 cubed, so 8. 8 to the power of 2 on 3. So again, this is 8 to the power of 1 third, cube root of 8, which is 2. And then we're squaring that. 2 squared, so 4. 81 to the power of 3 quarters. That is 81 to the power of a quarter and then cubed. So 4th root of 81. Again, let's think about our powers of 3. 3 to the 1 is 3. 3 to the 2 is 9. 3 to the 3 is 27. 3 to the 4 is 81. So 4th root of 81 is 3. This is 3 cubed, so 27. Then we've got 8 on 27 to the power of negative 1 third. So remember the negative power is about taking the reciprocal of the base, not taking the reciprocal of the power, the reciprocal of the base. So we've got 27 on 8 to the power of positive 1 third. So that is 27 to the power of 1 third over 8 to the power of 1 third. Cube root of 27 is 3 cube root of 8 is 2. Okay, question 2. We want to express each of the following in index form. 
Okay, so we don't want to have roots in there, we want to have only indices. Okay, so we've got cube root of 8x to the 7. So that is going to be 8x to the 7 to the power of a third. That means we're going to have 8 to the power of a third, cube root of 8, which will be 2, and x to the power of, we multiply 7 times 3, sorry, 7 times a third, so that's 7 thirds. So we have 2x to the 7 thirds. Fifth root of 2p to the 4, so that is going to be um, 2p to the 4 all to the power of 1 fifth, so that is going to be 2 to the 1 fifth, which is not a whole number, we'll just leave that as 2 to the 1 fifth, and then p to the 4 fifths. 7 root 7, let's write that um, in index form. So 7 root 7, that's 7 to the power of 1 times 7 to the power of half. We add our indices, 1 plus a half, 2 on 2 plus 1 on 2 is 3 on 2. All right, here we've got 6 times a to the 4, b to the 11. We've got that to the power of a half. So we do 6 a to the power of 4 times a half, so that's 2 b to the power of 11 times a half, which is 11 on 2. Okay, question 3. Express, uh, sorry, simplify expressing your answer with positive exponents. Okay, so we've got x to the 2 thirds divided by x to the power of a half. So all of our un other index laws still apply when we're dividing indices with the same base. Dividing powers with the same base, we know we subtract the exponents or subtract the indices. So this is going to be x to the power of 2 thirds take away a half. We need some fraction work here. Subtracting fractions needs a common denominator. So that is 4 sixths take away 3 sixths. So this is x to the power of 1 sixth. 125 n to the negative 6. So that's going to be an all to the power of a third, sorry. 125 to the power of a third. So the cube root of 125, which is 5. And then we're going to have n to the power of negative 6 times a third, negative 2. So this is going to be 5n to the negative 2. We want to express our answer with positive exponents. So n to the negative 2 is 1 on n squared. So 5 times that will be 5 on n squared. 32e to the power of 5, f to the power of 10. So we're going to have 32 to the power of 1 fifth e to the power of 1, 5 times 1 fifth is 1, and f to the power of 2, 10 times 1 fifth is 2. Okay, so the fifth root of 32, that's 2, so we've got 2e f squared. Fourth root of 16t to the 8, so that is 16 to the power of a quarter, and t, now oh, I'll write it all at once. Sorry, so we've got 16t to the 8 all to the power of a quarter, which is 16 to the power of a quarter, fourth root of 16, that's 2, and t to the power of 8 times a quarter, so that's 2. So 2t two squared. Okay, so that's your fractional indices. So fractional indices representing roots. Power of a half, square root, power of a third, cube root, etc. If you've got non-unit fractions, you're splitting them into two separate powers. You know, a power of 3 on 2 is a power of 3 um, and a power of a half happening at the same time. So um, x to the power of a half and then to the power of 3. Um, all your index laws still apply. It means you might need to work with fractions, adding, subtracting, etc. But um, we're just adding this into our already known information about index laws. So you can now go on and work on the set exercise.